Hello you cool cats and welcome back to Trails in the Sky. We're on episode 2. I know episode 1 was basically about tutorial and stuff and episode 2 we're going to start off by kind of getting to know some of the characters in this town. So let's go ahead and talk to a few. Start with uh, this little kid. Ah, Estelle and Joshua. Did the two of you really become bracers? What? How'd you know? That's because working in the media is my future goal. I'm going to join the Liberal News Service and work hard as a reporter. Don't take my information lightly, either. Oh, sure thing. My gut feeling says that the two of you are going to be in the tabloids. Ah, uh, well, thanks. Isn't it romantic that you two lovers are bracers who stand for justice? I have a feeling that a juicy drama is about to unfold. But lovers? Joshua and I aren't lovers, we're family. You really don't understand anything, Estelle. Joshua's adopted and things could go either way in the future, right? Plus, leaving it at that would surely please the readers. R readers? Anyway, I'm looking forward to the both of you in more ways than one. <laughs> we have a shipper on deck. <laughs> I repeat, a shipper on deck. Um, so we'll start on this corner of the town. Oh, there's a granny here. Just when I thought Luke had come home, he took off out the door again. I told that boy that dinner was almost ready, too. That boy is always running around like his pants are on fire. He just can't sit still for two minutes. Alright. My son, Pat, has been gone since this morning. I hope he's not getting into any trouble with Luke. I'm worried about what he's up to. Thanks to the airliners in recent days, even Roland has been able to get a good selection of books. And thanks to that, I find myself compelled to buy a new one each time I head to the store. But I get yelled at by my wife for getting so many, so maybe I should cut back a bit. I only got the first chapter of this novel, so if you want, I'll give it to you. Received. Carnella... Carnelia? Chapter 1? You're gonna hear a lot of, um, repeat voices from me for characters, because... While I try to make my voices different, there's not a lot- there's a lot of reading. Is that like, um, a key item? There it is, chapter one. Oh, it's an actual book! Well, I tell you what, I will- at some point I will read these later, but not today. I'm not gonna start off with just a reading section in this game. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You want me to head home. I know, I know, but there's a whole town to explore. Well, Estelle, I haven't seen you around here for a while. It's been some time since you graduated from Sunday school, right? Did you say hi to Alyssa? She started helping around here not too long ago. Please visit her if you have some time. She's been wanting to see you. Okay. So it seems like after you talk to them once, they typically have repeat dialogue the second time around. It seems like somehow I'll be able to get the lumber I wanted. Simon, our septium purchases are going through just fine, right? Since I spared no effort in coming all the way to Roland, failure is not an option. Let's see. I've made contact with some people at the Malga Mine, and we're working out a few business details at the moment. But, but please wait just a little longer. Welcome! Oh, Estelle and Joshua. It's been a while, hasn't it, Alyssa? Is there something going on today? Could it be that you're on a date together? Yeah, right, but anyway, check this out. I am officially a real bracer. Well, congratulations, Estelle. You've always wanted to be a bracer ever since you were a kid, haven't you, Estelle? But don't bracers have a lot of dangerous jobs? Yeah, something like that. Joshua, Estelle, don't overdo it, and watch out for each other. Alyssa has this tendency to get in over her head. That's a very good observation, Alyssa. The only problem is that Estelle doesn't realize this herself. <laughs> I'm standing right here, you guys. Joshua and I just care about you, Estelle, that's all. Anyway, don't get full of yourself and end up getting hurt, okay? Okay, okay. Okay. 
My son-in-law still has half a man when it comes to this business. This isn't an easy job, and it takes a good two, three years to become a real woodsman. Alright. Oh. It looks like that female merchant over there came from Bose. Not only does she seem smart, but she's extremely attractive as well. And again, she probably never gave me the time of day. Her accent is a little different, though. In my opinion, there are two kinds of enjoyment that comes from food. Put bluntly, they are eating and cooking. But I think my passion for cooking outweighs the other. Of course I enjoy eating delicious food as well. If you heard like something fall, that was um my cat jumping down. Nom 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 gulp. I better get back to the mine before the boss figures out I ditch work. Wholesome pasta? This is different from anything else he sells. Well, I don't want to sell anything. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We are very quickly catching up to where I no longer know what to do in this game. I'm so glad that Rinnan's store has finally gotten on track. It seems as though it has become much easier to get products since he started having them brought in by airliner. Ever since the first ornaments were invented, this world has become a much easier place to live in. Oh, that's just a little alcove. Oh, there's a person out here. It's such a warm day today, isn't it? Looks like we'll be able to take a nice afternoon nap. Two airliners which travel to the five major cities, an eastward circling one and a westward circling one. The westward circling airliner travels from Grand Cell to Brolent, Bose, Rouen, and Zeiss in that order. The eastward circling airliner travels the opposite direction from Grand Cell to Zeiss, Rouen, Bose, and Rolent in that order. I'll never remember that, so I hope that wasn't important. I'm proud of the work I do here. That's because I've always wanted to work on orbital engines ever since I can remember. It's like these types of things where I find like these little nooks and crannies in places that I'm like, there should be something there. Something hidden there, you know what I mean? like that only our employees are allowed in. When I'm told I can't go in, I want to go in even more! Luscious chocolate skin, captivating ruby eyes. Charizard's quite an exotic beauty, wouldn't you say? She's got that fascinating charm that people in Liberal don't have. Oh, it's... I didn't realize that it was a... I, I should have realized that was a guy. <laughs> Helen's off in his little world again. <laughs> I've actually gone drinking with Shirzard before. The strange thing is, I, I have absolutely no memory of that time. <laughs> Maybe I should try and ask her out again. What is this? Hotel, Roland. Got an unusual guest staying here at the moment. She appears to be a student from the genus Genus Royal Academy. I hear she's come here to study about Roland. Boys only. Uh, a unique character staying at this hotel, you say? Sounds like a potential party member. Girl in uniform. Phew! I finally arrived here in Roland. I think the first thing I'm going to do is have a look around. 
I have no idea what voice to give her. But I have a feeling she's important. She didn't look important, though. That was the weird thing, like, as a character. I mean, she looked kind of... Normal. I don't know why I bother checking every nook and cranny when I know that there's nothing going to be there. I have this feeling that something should be there. The missus sometimes helps me with my jobs around the house. On top of that, she treats me like I'm part of the family. She even took me out to eat the other day. I couldn't be happier. Lena takes care of all the housework, but... I feel a little awkward about it since I often end up doing some of it myself. I'm sure it's because I'm used to doing it myself before coming to live at this house. It appears like I'm taking Lita's job away, so I wonder if I'm causing her any trouble. Oh, she married into wealth. Compared to other cities, Roland is certainly rural with no distinct features. However, I love this city. There's just something warm and inviting about Roland. I want to build a city that gives importance to that atmosphere. Roland Chapel. Estelle, you seem to be rather cheerful today. Did something wonderful happen in your life? <laughs> Yes, I guess you could say that. Joyous occasions are indeed a wonderful thing, but it is at times when things go well that we should gird our loins for the trials that lie ahead. O oh, goddess Eidos of the firmament, please guide these unseasoned youths. Don't be a killjoy. I'm the newly assigned sister to this chapel. I was recently transferred from the royal city to Royland. This place is surrounded by greenery, and everyone in the town is so kind, I think I'm going to enjoy it here. Father Divine is a bit strict, but he is someone I can respect a lot. Okay, I have no idea what that was. Alright, so where haven't I looked? Been to the hotel, been there... Oh, the arms and guards. Hello there, Joshua and Estelle. Stella, listen to this. I finally became a bracer. My goodness, is that true? And Joshua too? Yes, ma'am. That's right. Congratulations to the both of you. You did wonderfully. Dee. <laughs> but one thing, Estelle, you shouldn't be proud just because you became a bracer. This is just the starting point. I, I understand that. The two of you will experience a lot of new things as bracers, and I hope that I can be proud of the fact that this is the path you chose in the coming years. But enough about my feelings. Please work hard and good luck. Hey there, Estelle and Joshua. Good afternoon, Mr. Elgar. Good afternoon, sir. Correct me if I'm wrong, but today is the last day of your training, isn't it? I seem to remember you saying something about that the last time I had you run the store. Yes, that's right. So how'd your training go? That emblem on your chest means I shouldn't have expected anything less from Cassius's kids. But we're still bracers in training. I see, but well, I knew you were going to have to give up your part-time job here sooner or later. Yes, I'm really sorry about that. Don't sweat it. I knew that it happened eventually when I hired, hired you on. It's a shame, though. There's hardly anyone out there with as good an eye for weapons as you. But that's the path you've chosen, so get out there and show us what you're made of. Ooh, better equipment. I'll have to save up for that. So, pretty sure I took care of, I went to the melters already. Oh, there's, there's NPCs back here. I've confessed to her several times since this morning, but I can't get her to accept my love. It doesn't seem like she hates me or anything. What am I doing wrong? I'm so distressed. He's my type, and I'd like to accept his proposal, but this place is not my ideal solution. Um, is the place or whatever really that important? 
Of course it is! This could be a memory of a lifetime. It may be the place that comes to my mind when I'm an old grandma and lying on my deathbed. I just can't accept an alleyway like this as being that place. <laughs> I guess this is the type of thing that only can be understood by those involved. Um, yo, you think we could help him out? Uni should be back any time now, bud. That's odd of her not to be home by now. Estelle Joshua, if you see my Uni, could you tell her to come home? She's never broken curfew before, but I'm, I'm worried because she's still just a little girl. Who's Uni? It's not you. You're the... Ellie. You're Claire. It's almost time for my husband to come home from work. Better go get to work on preparing the dinner. Have I met a uni? I love my daddy so much. He's so strong and he's always nice to me. I've already started dinner for the night. I'm making plenty, so hopefully my husband will be coming home today. Staying overnight in the mine and working through the night is pretty common for him. Hmm. Oh my gosh, I was zooming around and I ac accidentally zoomed in here. <clears throat> A beautiful sound as always. I love the toll of this tower's bell. The bell does more than tell the time. It's also marking Roland's history. There's a ladder that goes up to the observation deck. What's wrong, Estelle? Something on your mind? It's nothing, really. How about we climb up to the observation deck? Sure, I guess. That was... weird. seemed wistful about it. Erected in partnership with the royal, liberal royal family, Septum Church in Roland City. Destroyed during the Hundred Days War when Roland was bombarded by the Erodian Ero Imperial Army. Rebuilt with the cooperation of the citizens of Roland. I still didn't find that uni girl. Wait, wait, wait. Are you? No, you're from Roland. No, I don't- I didn't find the uni person. Wherever she is, she is nowhere to be found. Alright. Enough messing around. Let's go talk to him. Hey there, Estelle and Joshua. How can I help you? Did you manage to become bracers? You bet we did. Maybe I should have you start calling me Hyper Bracer Estelle from now on. By the way, Mr. Rona, did the liberal news come in? Yeah, I came in a little afternoon. Don't brush me off like that, you two. Oh, whatever. I'll take one copy then. That comes to 100 Mira, please. I know my dad always buys a copy of this magazine, but does it really sell that well? It sure does. The Liberal News has an excellent reporter and camera woman who have done a great job reporting the latest and most reliable news. They're even supposed to have a running story related to Queen Alicia's birthday celebration. One more thing before you go. This gift is my way of saying congratulations. It's a free sample item I received with my shipment of goods. Don't hold the free part against me. Received recipe book. What's this supposed to be for? There's a ton of blank pages. It's a recipe book, isn't it? You got it. Were you hurt? You got it. When you get hurt fighting, if you just limit yourself to healing bombs all the time, it's going to cut a pretty deep into your wallets. This is where a recipe book comes into play. If you eat food to recover your strength instead, it's basically free. Assuming you have all the ingredients anyway. So if you eat something new, write down what's in it and you'll have a lot of recipes in no time. How about we try it out? Go ahead and eat this cookie, Estelle. Well, I've made it a personal rule to never turn down sweets. Oh. Basically, all you have to do is eat the food to learn the recipe. It's as simple as that. 
As you're traveling about, you should eat whatever you, food you come across that you haven't had an opportunity to try before. Oh, well, that sounds pretty convenient. Um, it's not that I don't like cooking and all, it's just that I never seem to get any better. I'd sure love to be able to increase my repertoire and really shock my dad's taste buds for once in my life. That's the spirit. And in passing, if you need any ingredients, I'll be delighted to service your cooking needs. You really know how to solicit your customers, Mr. Renan. Thank you for the recipe book. We'll put it to good use. Eating the recommended dish at restaurants or using to-go meals adds, a, adds the recipe to the recipe book. By selecting the recipe book, all learned recipes will be displayed. As long as the necessary ingredients are available, the food can be made. There are two types of food. Sit-down meals, which must be eaten on the spot, and to-go meals, which can be carried as items. Sit-down meals cannot be carried as items. Ingredients used for cooking can be bought at a store or acquired from monsters. Oh. Oh. I see, and he just, he straight up sells, okay. Well, hold on then. I'll eat the recommended meal later. Let me... I'll probably do like some combat and then eat the recommended meal just to not waste it. Um, I think I've talked to everyone, so I believe we'll, we'll, we can head on home. Estelle, Joshua, am I glad I found you two. Oh, hi, Ina. Is something wrong? You seem to be in quite a hurry. We've got a bit of a problem. Is your father at home today? Yes, he is. He said something about having to sort out a bunch of documents. But what's going on? You know Luke and Pat, right? Sure we do. In fact, we saw them not too long ago. What's wrong? Are they in some sort of trouble? I don't know how to say this, but... I just heard from Uni that Luke and Pat ran off to the tower that lies on the northern outskirts of Roland. Oh, Uni must have been in the guild. You mean the Tower of Esmeral? You mean the Tower of Esmelas? Isn't that place supposed to be breeding ground for monsters? That's what they say. Unfortunately, at the moment, Sherzard is on, out on Bracer business, so I want to ask your father to bring the boys home safely. What are you talking about? There's no time for that. Joshua and I will go after them and bring them back. I don't know if that's such a good idea. The two of you only just became junior Bracers today. With all due respect, I believe that Estelle's judgment is correct in this situation. If the two of us hurry, we may even be able to catch up with the boys before they reach the tower. I understand. I will take responsibility for whatever happens. As an emergency request from the Bracer Guild, I ask that you lose no time in bringing about the safe return of these children. Roger that. Understood. The Esmelis Tower can be reached by taking the western path at the junction along the Malga Trail. You can get to Malga Trail just through Roland's northwest gate. I'll be on standby at the Guild, so if you can run into any trouble, you know where to find me. This is our first real job. Come on, Joshua, we don't have any time to lose. I'm right behind you. Alright. <gasps> this must have been uni. I wonder if Luke and Pat are alright. I tried my best to stop them. As Melis Tower, beware of ma monsters. Malga Mine. This way's the Malga Mine. Never eat something. Okay, I think this is the way that I need to go. Oh, the path diverges. Oh. I guess this is where we're supposed to go. We gotta rescue the kids! It looks like we've come all the way to Esmela's Tower. I didn't see any sign of them along the trail, so do you think they wandered inside? It's quite likely that's the case. Let's go in. It looks like we'll need to hurry. Right! 
Right? Let's go save the boys. It's dark in here. I'm scared. Quit being a baby. We're only on the first floor of this place. Did you hear that? They really did come in here. <gasps> Estelle, are you alright? Luke! Pat! If you can hear me, answer me now! Those little brats! Are they pretending they can't hear me? They might have climbed up to the second floor. Let's hurry and see if we can find them. Let's go, let's go, let's go! Is there anything here? Nope. Uh, here. Up we go. What, what are we gonna do? Somebody help! Uh, rush in with Joshua? Let's go, Joshua! Right, I've got your back. You monsters go somewhere else. No, shoo, shoo, leave us alone. Chew on this. Estelle, what are you doing here? Joshua, you're here too. Get back, you two. These monsters aren't playing around. We'll take care of them. I guess this counts as a boss encounter. Protect all NPCs. If an NPC's health reaches zero, the game is over. Oh, that will not be a problem. Let's destroy that thing with a pummel. <laughs> and shoe. Why would you walk up towards the enemy? There you go. Get away. Easy. Oh, level up. Still learn taunt. She's a tank? It looks like that's that! Yeah, I'm glad everyone's safe too. By the way, that was great timing the way you blitzed those monsters, Estelle. You really think so? Is it safe now? Oh man, that was awesome! You really showed them, Estelle. Not bad for a girl. You little twerp! Ow, that hurts! What are you trying to do to me? What's wrong with you? You even dragged poor Pat all the way up here against his will. It's time to think about what you did today. Ow, you're hurting me! Stop it! I said stop it, you violent she-devil! So, this is the thanks I get for saving your neck, huh? Looks like it's time to give you some of my special discipline. Ow, 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 ow! Oh, Raid Estelle, I'm sorry. Everything was all my fault. Um, Estelle, shouldn't we forgive each other like they teach us at school? This brat doesn't need forgiveness, but a little discipline should do the trick. Estelle, behind you. It's, some it's something with teeth, isn't it? Uh, nice monster? I'm not going to make it in time. Huh? Dad, you came. You still lack skill in understanding, Estelle. You must always prepare for unseen danger by sharpening your senses. It's part of what it means to be a bracer. D dad what, what are you doing here? I just happened to be in town and heard the whole story from Ina. I'll give you points for your quick thinking and taking action to come after the children. But you failed to follow through completely. I really messed up, didn't I? It's a good thing you showed up when you did. I'm sorry. 
I should have been watching her back. <laughs> that just means you have room for improvement. Constantly working to overcome your weak points is the key. Understood. So how about we head home, everyone? Can you boys walk? I, I think so. That was incredible, Mr. Bray! You were like a gazillion times more awesome than Estelle! <laughs> of course I was! I'm her father! Alright, everyone, let's file on out of here! I'm with you, Mr. Bray! Who's the glory hog now? I mean, I guess I should be thankful that Dad saved my behind. Why does he have to go and take all the credit like that? It really chaps my hide! <laughs> That's just the way he is. After all, he is Cassius Bright. It seems like you've had quite a day. Dad is just unbelievable. The second we get back to Roland, he says, I'll leave the reporting to you, and takes off for home. The sheer nerve, I tell you. There's no need to make a mountain out of a molehill over it. At least the boys came back safe and sound. Anyway, I think that's all there is to report. Received payment for child rescue. Woo! Nice. Gained some BP. Current rank is Junior Bracer, ninth class. You did well for your first assignment. From the details of your report alone, I believe I can commend you both for a job well done. You should be proud of yourselves. Y you really think so? I know so. In fact, you'll do even better on your next job. If anything else comes up, I would appreciate your help again. Sure. How about we head home, too? I guess we better. I've still got dinner to prepare. Would you mind holding on a second? A letter arrived for your father just a little while ago. Unfortunately, since he went straight home, I never got a chance to give it to him. Do you think he could deliver it instead? Received letter to Cassius. I wonder if it's more work-related stuff. I imagine so. The letter appears to be from one of our foreign branches. One of the guild's foreign branches? As I'm sure you already know by now, Liberal isn't the only country where the Bracer Guild exists. On top of that, your father is widely known all across the Zemurian continent, so we can expect these kinds of letters from time to time. If you two would be as so kind as to make sure he gets that this letter, I would really appreciate it. I'm sure today was tough for your first day as Bracers. But you had a fine showing. I'll see you two tomorrow. I think this letter addressed to your father is important, so don't forget to give it to him. No current job listings. Okay. Well. I feel like I should look around. It was when the stars had just emerged from the veil of the night that he asked me here. Sweetly, he whispered in my ear, I want you to be mine. How romantic! It's just the situation I've always wanted to be in. Well, I guess it's not a bad place and all, but... The two of them came up here just for that? <laughs> I guess this is the type of thing that can only be understood by those involved. Yes! Listen to this, guys! I got her to go out on it with me. Why does it was all worth the single day of trouble I went through today? A uh, single day? Uh, I guess that could be called a victory of perseverance. I wondered if she was going to say anything up here when we went up here because she said something last time. But it's kind of interesting how the characters are are having developments while I'm doing my own thing. I know, I know, you want us to go home. I've heard that you've had... I've heard that you two have had some major success recently, Estelle and Joshua. I knew I was right to keep my eye on you two. Tee hee. Keep up the good work. I'm a fan of the both of you. That reminds me, I heard a new iode was discovered in the Malga mine. This may be something to look forward to. <laughs> Simon, it was certainly worth coming here to do business this time. It seems as though I'll be able to stock up on septium as planned. I might even it might even be worth staying in Roland a little longer. 
Welcome, you two. Stop by and have a bite to eat every once in a while, okay? If I ask my d mom and dad, I could probably get you a free meal. Of all the things Pep could have done, he ran off outside of town. Even after I told him so many times how dangerous it is because of roaming monsters. I'm going to have my husband give him a talking to later. Thanks for saving us today, Estelle. I wonder what would have happened if, to us if you and Joshua hadn't come. Luke might grumble and say some mean things, but I'm sure he's really grateful to you, Estelle. Please don't get too angry with him. Phew, I finally found the book I was looking for. I wonder why it was shelved with Pat's books. What is this? There's a notebook sitting on top of the desk. Read. I'm a bracer. I live in a small rural town, and maintaining peace in the region is what my job is all about. Today I received some job requests from a few clients, so I set off for where the duty called. My first job was to milk some cows on the farm nearby. The next was to help turn over some fields. Who was anyone kidding? That kind of job was a cinch when it came to my skill with a pitchfork. For my last job of the day, I was to babysit. At first I thought... Watching a bunch of kids would be easy, but it turned out that I was wrong, dead wrong. To my dismay, there were seven whiny kids in the house. Even for a professional like myself, seven kids is a bit much, but I am a bracer and I will do my duty. I got to work and cradled the ones who wouldn't stop crying, changed their messy diapers, broke up, a f broke up fights over toys, and even managed to do a ton of small jobs around my client's house, like washing the laundry, cleaning up, and taking their dog for a walk. Even when I got hungry and felt like I had no more energy to go on, I didn't forget my duty to report to the guild. If I gave up, what a loser I'd be in front of everyone. After going through all this and arriving at the guild, the other bracers in the office stared at me in amazement. That's right, you guessed it. I'm famous for being a bracer in this town. Other bracers paying attention to me like this is what I have to deal with every day. They're probably all just jealous of my superior skills. Anyway, where were we? Okay, I remember now. On my way to report to the receptionist, when somebody, when suddenly somebody grabbed me by the collar from behind. Turning around, I realized that it was more scary than any monster alive. It was my dad. After thwacking me a good one on the head, he yelled so loud that everyone could hear. So you think you can just run off and play bracer every day without ever bothering to help your mother around the house, huh? After that, my dad dragged me all the way back home and lectured me until who knows when. I didn't do anything wrong either. Seriously, what the heck? I'm a self-appointed bracer. Today I'm off again to maintain peace in the region and solve whatever problems need solving at the request of my clients. Hmm. I just wanted to say I'm grateful that you saved us. And, I hate to admit it, but you were pretty cool, Estelle. Not as cool as your dad, of course. Luke is naughty as all get out with these days. Just when I thought he was late getting home, turns out he ran off to Esmala's tower. It's a good thing those bracers went after him like they did or who knows what might have happened. It's a good point. Try teaching Luke to, to behave. I suppose I could talk to more NPCs in the town, but I think that's it for now. Oh, wait. We'll talk to one more. For a backwoods town, these stores do carry a pretty nice selection of goods. The Liberal Kingdom definitely has a different feel with all these ornaments everywhere. I better get in the mood to do business starting tomorrow or I'm going to face some serious financial repercussions. Alright. Back home we go. Hey, Joshua. Hmm? Do you think I'm really cut out to be a bracer? Well, you seem to have inherited your father's skill with a staff. And your nosy personality doesn't let you ignore someone in distress. Really? You think so? Sure, but why are you asking? You're still thinking about what happened back at the tower? Yeah. Because of my carelessness, Luke almost got caught in the middle of a dangerous situation. Dad hadn't come when he did. He could have been seriously injured. I guess I'm just worried about whether or not I'm able to stay on top of things in the future. That kind of talk doesn't sound like the Estelle I know. Huh? If we fail today, then all that's left to do is to take back our losses tomorrow, right? Overthinking and worrying about things that haven't happened yet is definitely not like you. Isn't being a bracer what you've always dreamed of? How can you expect to succeed if you let something like what happened today discourage you? Joshua, you're right. This isn't me. This isn't like me at all. 
don't think a serious expression really suits your face either. You laughing like a big ditz is far more natural for you. Hey, what's that supposed to mean? You're gonna see my angry expression if you keep that up. <laughs> okay, I admit the last comment was pushing things a bit. I'll overlook this. I'll overlook it this time. And thanks for cheering me up. I don't know about you, but I'm so ready to get home and eat. My stomach just started growling like a bear. Maybe glutton is closer to the mark than dits. Alright, back home we go. We're home, Dad. We finished reporting to the guild like you told us to. Good work, kids. The details of your reports will be reviewed at each branch and will affect your pay and rank advancement in the future. Please make sure you always keep... Please make sure you always remember to do it. Don't worry, we will. And before I forget, I got the copy of the liberal news you wanted. There was a letter for you at the guild, too. A letter, huh? Well, I'm gonna get cleaned up and start dinner. Oh, and Dad? Um, thanks for coming when you did today. You really helped me out back there. I see you're being rather gracious today. Papa is happy. How delightful that my daughter has finally understood what a great man her father truly is. There's no need to hold back, Estelle. Come and jump into your father's loving arms. In your dreams? I swear, the men in this house have one thing in common. They never know when to shut up. I guess she's not as depressed as I thought she'd be. Should I be thanking you, Joshua? I didn't do much. I just gave her a push in the right direction. Estelle's a resilient girl to begin with. <laughs> yes, she is. She still has a long way to go. She'll run into more than just a few stumbling blocks in this line of work, and overcoming these obstacles is what will teach her to stand on her own two feet. There's that soft side. There's that soft side of yours talking again. Oh no! Are eggs supposed to explode like that? I guess I shouldn't have gone in expecting to make a perfect meal in a single try. Now wait, cooking is supposed to be about passion. Exploding eggs are passionate, right? Now, once more. That daughter of mine can sometimes be a little too passionate. I think I'll go help with dinner. We don't want the curtains to catch fire again. But at this rate, there's no telling when we can expect to have a bite of food ready on the ta dinner table. <laughs> all right then, let's see what this litter is all about, shall we? Cassius cuts the letter seal. Hmm, a message from the Erebonian Empire. What? Wow, this is a surprise. This new dish is what I like to call Estelle's Explosion Over Rice. Be sure to savor every last morsel. I will. Your cooking this evening is excellent compliments to the chef. <laughs> this raw talent at its best. Today certainly has been a busy but great day nonetheless. We qualified as junior bracers, we had our first real assignment, and I didn't even lose my eyebrows making dinner this time. Not to mention the food being delicious, for a first attempt this dish is actually quite edible. At first I thought I might have to pitch it out the window while you weren't looking, but it seems that technique won't be necessary tonight. Sometimes you're just so despicable. Sometimes you're just so despicably rude, Dad. Don't you know how to be humble and just say something tastes nice? All right then, how about this? Boy, I never thought I'd be able to eat something wonderful like this before I had to leave on business. You've made a splendid meal, Estelle. Thanks, Dad. Wait, business? Are you really leaving again? Yes. Something unexpected came up. This time, I'm going to be away for a little while. H hold on a minute! You're leaving when? Tomorrow morning. What? I don't care what kind of job you're doing. That's just too soon. It's about that letter, isn't it? Was there some kind of incident? Oh, it's nothing like that. Just a simple investigation. I'll have to visit a number of places, so it'll take me about a solid month before I'm through. That being the case, Please take a good care of the house while I'm away. What do you mean, that being the case? 
He always used some vague excuse like that and take off for who knows how long. We have to accept it, Estelle. Brace's job is to help those who come to ask us for help. I know, I know, but what are you going to do about all your jobs here at the Roland Branch? You've already accepted a few of them, haven't you? Oh, only about five or six. So I was thinking, and how about the both of you handle them for me instead? What? Are you really asking us to do work that you're supposed to be doing? That I am. I'll have you do the ones which I think you can accomplish. I'll ask Sherzahard to handle the difficult ones. So what do you say? Uh, do these choices actually do anything? I, I mean, I don't know what choices do, but I'll just click sure. Sure, of course we will. You're okay doing these too, right Joshua? Yep, no problem. Looks like a good way to get some experience as a bracer. Then it's settled. I'll stop by the guild and let Ina know about the change of plan before I leave. Alright, I'm starting to feel more determined than ever. We'll have to bust our tails with these jobs so we don't tarnish your name while you're gone. Oh, Estelle, my beloved daughter. Papa is so proud. Oh, my dear Lena, who art in heaven, can you see your daughter now? Her little Estelle has grown up to be such a lovely young woman. Hey, said Dad, you're getting old. People lose their trust in you at this age. You might as well just throw in the towel forever. I'm only helping you out because I'm your daughter, and I have a duty to pay you back for the last 16 years. I am only 45, and what's more, I'm very likely the most active member in the entire guild. Not bad for a pair of comedians. By the way, Dad, which flight will you be on tomorrow? The one headed for Gransel or the one headed for Bose? I'll be the one headed for Gransel. My flight departs at 10 o'clock in the morning. That means I'll have to get up a little earlier tomorrow. I'd better set my alarm clock just in case. Are you still awake, Joshua? Better hold off on the liquor or Estelle will get mad again. This is just my way of lifting my spirits before I travel. How about yourself? Would you like to join me for a drink? I'll pass. Actually, what I should be saying here is don't offer alcohol to minors. I'm not like Shara, who would jump at any chance to enjoy a drink or ten. <laughs> That's because she holds her liquor much better than I do. Something really serious happening, isn't there? There's no conclusive evidence, but there appears to be some sort of movement within the Empire. The Erebonian Empire? That sounds pretty suspicious. This movement doesn't appear to be overt, but that's what has me worried. I intend to do a little probing at the Erebonian Embassy to see what turns up. Understood. I'll make sure to look after Estelle while you're gone. Don't spoil... Don't you spoil that girl, you hear me? Now that she's become a bracer, she needs to learn to look after herself. Estelle will be fine. She's got good instincts, and despite being rough around the edges, she has talent with the staff as well. There's no doubt in my mind that she'll be a first-class bracer someday. Yet at present, she's like a babe in arms who knows nothing about the realities of the world around her. At some point in time, she'll have to choose which path to follow in life. And Joshua... The same can be said for you, too. It's already been five years since you become part of this family, hasn't it? How time does fly. Yes, it sure does seem that way. About what you said back then, are you sure you won't reconsider taking those words back? For me, keeping my word is what defines who I am. I can't do something as simple as that. I don't know how I can live with myself. This may sound stubborn, but I can't take back what I said. I'm sorry. There's no need for you to apologize, but I'd like you to remember this. No matter what path you choose in life, you can't erase these past five years. Estelle and I will always be your family, no matter what may befall you. 
Thanks, Dad. Prologue, A Father's Love, A New Beginning. Well, it looks like it's time for me to board my flight. Estelle, don't do anything I wouldn't do myself, and try not to be a handful for Joshua either. For the umpteenth time, I heard you already. How about you try to not go overboard yourself with your own work? You're not getting any younger, you know. Say what you will, but I'm not about to be overtaken by any youngsters. Sure is a hard. I'm really sorry about placing all this work on your shoulders at the last minute. Please, don't be. I am slightly concerned, however, about whether or not I can do a decent job in your place. There's no need to be humble, Silver Streak. I don't mean to make your life any more difficult, but please keep an eye on these two. You just leave that to me. Is tightening up the reins and not spoiling these two fine with you? You definitely understand the way I think. What's this all about? <laughs> Looks to me like a mutual understanding between master and pupil. The Gransel-bound airliner, Linde, will be departing shortly. All passengers, please board the airship now. Uh-oh, I better take my seat. Have a great trip, Dad. We'll take care of everything here while you're gone. Uh... Hurry back. When you're done with your work, make sure you come straight home and no goofing off. Is that any way to see your beloved Papa off? Oh well, I'll try my best to come home as soon as I can. Alright, you two, be good while I'm gone. He's gone again. Yeah. Come on, you two. There's no need to look so down. Your father will be back in no time. I don't know what kind of investigation he's been asked to do this time. When it comes to your father, we'll have it done before you know it. I I'm not sad that he's gone. He's always been away more than he's been at home. Alright, alright, if you say so. Anyway, I'm going to get to work on those jobs your father left for me. But if you run into any trouble, give me a holler. Will do, but first, I'd like to try and finish a few jobs with Joshua. I want to see what we're capable of doing as junior bracers. Alright, if you insist. Imagine that with Joshua tagging along, there's probably not much to be worried about. Good luck, you two. Thanks! We'll do our best. So, what do you want to do now, Estelle? Shall we go stop by the guild? Yeah, we should probably talk to Ina and find out what the jobs are waiting for us. Let's go! Alright guys, so in case you were wondering, at what point did I stop playing this game the first time I played? Well, we've reached it. We've hit the spot exactly here where I stopped playing the game. Can I? Oh, there's quests here. Find the shiny rock. Client Charles. Pay 30 Mira. Difficulty easy. I'd like someone to find my shiny rock. Please speak to me directly for details. I think I might have dropped it behind the Melder's Orble Factory. Milch Main Road Monster. Client Bracer Guild. Pay 600 Mira. Difficulty low. A ferocious monster known as the Pine Plant has been spotted roving the Milch Main Road. Bracers from this branch are requested to deal with this threat immediately. So I can... Let's go talk to Ina. <laughs> oh, good morning, Estelle and Joshua. Has your father already left? Yep, just barely. That's why we came here to find out about the jobs he left uh, for us. Sure. There are a total of three jobs I have lined up for you. For the first one, I'd like you to head out to the farm west of here. The farm west of here? Isn't that where Tio lives? Tio? I seem to have heard that name somewhere before. Tio Perzel. She's one of our classmates at Sunday school. She's also the Perzel farm owner's daughter. Oh, really? It's actually the Perzel Farm that put in a request to have someone exterminate some monsters. Are they really having problems like that? Fortunately, nobody has been hurt, 
but the owner and his family have been upset over their fields being destroyed by the creatures. Therefore, the guild received an extermination request. I never would have expected something like this to happen. Okay, we'll head out there right now. Here, take this with you. Received guild referral. This document certifies that you were dispatched by the guild. Please give it to the owner of the farm. I already know Tio's father pretty well, so I don't think this is necessary, but we'll take it just in case. Alright, now are you going to let me go around and, and fight monsters? Ah, perfect. Thank you guys so much for enjoying this second episode of Trails in the Sky. I'm sure that it's going to pick up a lot from here. The most of the beginning part was just tutorial and really getting us to understand the the lore of the world. What I really do like is how the characters all have like progressing dialogue NPC wise. One of the things that I I don't tell people is that I I like to make RPG maker games and um, though none of them will ever see the light of day what I do often like to do is give like every NPC like as much dialogue as possible and also have the dialogue change depending on where you are in the game and also who's in the party like I, I, I love doing that sort of thing so I really like seeing that this game has so much dialogue for the characters but anyways I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I will see you in the next one bye bye